Hey folks, welcome to Harmony with Hunter. My name is Michael Hunter, and today I'm going to be talking about what it's like to be a musician on Broadway. Uh, I've played violin on two Broadway shows. Uh, I subbed on The Band's Visit in 2018, performing on stage and in the pit. And then in 2019, I got my first chair playing on Tootsie. There are certainly more experienced Broadway players out there. Uh, so for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be focusing more on my own personal experiences with those two shows along with the things that I've learned from all the wonderful musicians I've met along the way. We're going to talk about what it's really like performing on stage or in the pit. We're going to talk about sort of the nitty gritty details, how much it pays, benefits, all the rules that sort of come along with playing in a Broadway show. We're also going to talk about what it takes to get one of these gigs, to get one of these very coveted jobs for musicians and what it takes to keep it. And before we get started, please do take a second to like this video and to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. And if you get a chance, please do check out some of my live looping videos. Uh, now with all of that out of the way, let's get this video started. So in the summer of 2018, I got an email asking if I wanted to audition to play violin for the band's visit. I, of course, said yes. Uh, they sent me some selections to prepare, and I went in for the audition, and I passed. Then I began a pretty extensive process for rehearsals. I went in to see the show and the audience, and then I shadowed the uh, actor-musician who originated the role, and then... Oh, sorry. Cat is back. Hi. Yes, you're very cute. Uh, I did a bunch of daytime rehearsals before finally getting clearance to do a put-in rehearsal, which is basically the show but with automation uh, and lights and everything and, and sound during the day. Finally on August 5th 2018 I had my Broadway stage debut. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really really cool. I was in full costume and I was running on stage and then running down to the pit and then running back to the stage and running down to the pit and I got to improvise and play these you know solos over this beautiful music uh, composed by David Yazbek. And at the end of it, uh, we got two standing ovations, which apparently was standard for the show. Um, but the first one was for the cast. And then the second one, the, the band remained on stage and we did an instrumental jam. And then we got a standing ovation just for the musicians, which if you're a musician on Broadway, you know how rare that is. You know, it's difficult to put into words what it's like receiving a standing ovation from a sold out Broadway house. I'll just say that it was easily one of the best nights of my life. Over the course of the next several months, I ended up subbing quite a bit because they were trying to find a permanent replacement for, for George, the guy who originated the role. So I got to know the band a bit better, I got to know the cast, and I started doing these uh, sort of promotional gigs, which were basically showcases for Broadway musicals where we would go out uh, and you know perform selections from the musical. Uh, I actually got to meet Neil Patrick Harris at one of them and shake his hand. It was nuts. I also got to play the uh, the Tonight Show, which was a surreal experience. I'm still not sure it actually happened. I mean, I know there's proof. I'm still not sure it actually happened. Eventually, they did find a replacement for George, and my time subbing on the band's visit came to an end. It was just an incredible experience, really, from, from top to bottom. And uh, as I would later learn, it was also a pretty unique experience for Broadway. It's not normal for uh, the musicians to be in costume, on stage, uh, and to be so integrated into the show and to have the creative freedom to improvise and solo. Normally, like if you're in the pit, the sheet music is in front of you and you play it exactly the same every single time. That's, that's kind of the goal. So uh, in a lot of ways, I was almost kind of spoiled by my first experience uh, playing on this show. Still, like I am just so incredibly grateful and fortunate that, you know, the band's visit was my first Broadway experience. And I'm internally grateful that I got to play even just a, a small part of that show, that wonderful, unique, beautiful show. In February 2019, I got a call from the music supervisor for the band's visit, uh, offering me the second violin chair on Tootsie. It's, it's Tootsie. It was my, my first, and hopefully not last, uh, steady gig on Broadway. I say steady in that um, it was my chair, which meant that as long as the show was running, it was mine to keep. If you're subbing on Broadway, your schedule is very much uh, reliant on the people that are offering you the, the subbing positions. Whereas if it's your chair, you really get to control you know, your schedule quite a bit more and you have this sort of baseline pay. You can play up to eight shows a week and get that full paycheck. 
or you can sub out as you like. It just allows you more control over your schedule uh, while giving you that sort of financial security underneath it, which is amazing. Tootsie was a more traditional Broadway gig than the band's visit. Um, so we were playing in a pit, there was no costumes. Uh, we were playing essentially the same music every single night. Um, so eight shows a week, uh, two doubles, and one day off. It did get a little repetitive over time. At the same time, you're playing at such a high level with such great musicians, like it, there's always something to sort of strive for and always things to improve on. The, the best way I can think to describe uh, having your own chair in a Broadway pit, it's like the best day job for a musician that you could think of. So like while I didn't have the same creative freedom and like that energy from the crowd I got from playing on the band's visit, I did have the flexibility now to go out and seek those things elsewhere. So you can sub out up to 50% of your shows per quarter um, and, and still hold on to your chair, which means that, you know, if you want to go play your own music somewhere, you can just get a sub and you can go do that. And you can do that without going broke, which is, you know, Nice. You know, I, w I would say, honestly, by far my favorite part of, of, of that job was the band. Uh, you know, I got to meet 18 other incredible musicians and we were lucky at the Marquee Theater. We had this big space uh, where we could congregate before and after shows and we all got to know each other really well. Some of my closest friends now are, are from that experience, which I'm incredibly thankful for. So, you know, between the camaraderie and the pit and the financial security and the flexibility with the schedule, uh, I'd say Tootsie was easily one of the best jobs. No, Tootsie was the best job I've ever had as a musician. There's a kind of mystery when it comes to the details of being a musician on Broadway, especially when it comes to the numbers. So I, I want to take this next section to sort of just go over that and actually really get into the, the nitty gritty. Uh, this information is all available you know, publicly on the local 802 Musician website, but I thought it'd be helpful just to sort of uh, condense it and put it out over here. Um, I know there's a stigma when it comes to discussing pay, but honestly, I think it's good to discuss that stuff openly. It helps keep things competitive. And then, like I said, all this stuff is available publicly anyways. So, how much does it pay to be a musician on Broadway? Uh, the weekly rate, if you play all eight shows, is just shy of $1,800 per week. Uh, that's before taxes and union dues and healthcare contributions and all that, which usually takes you down to around like $1,200 or so, which is, you know, for a musician is still pretty solid. Uh, there are bonuses that can up your, your, your base pay. So if you're like the concert master, if you're trumpet one, if you're on stage, if you're in costume, uh, doubling, if you're playing multiple instruments, that's a big one. Wind players and percussion players do very well on Broadway. Uh, the benefits you get through the union are also pretty solid. For me personally, I was very excited to see a dentist for the first time in, you know, 10 years. You have to join the union Obviously, you have to join local 802, but there are perks to, to being in the union as well. And also, you know, without that union, that pay and those benefits would be significantly lower. You know, just, just ask anyone that's done a tour of a Broadway show, anyone that's, you know, done a national or international tour, ask them how much they're getting paid and what their benefits are. You even actually get a number of sick days uh, per year, uh, depending on how many shows you play, which for a musician is kind of unheard of. When I was playing on Tootsie, I came down with pneumonia, had to go to the hospital, and missed a whole bunch of shows. Uh, but not only did most of that get covered by my health insurance, I actually got paid because I had sick days uh, accrued by then. So, you know, that was amazing. <laughs> I also wanted to discuss uh, subbing a little bit because that's a huge part of performing on Broadway. Um, I mentioned earlier the, the subbing process for the band's visit being, you know, pretty intense and pretty extensive. The normal subbing process for Broadway is, is is not that at all. You show up and you have to know the music. They will send you the sheet music, they'll send you the recordings, hopefully a conductor cam so you can sort of see the cues. Um, but you have to know it. <laughs> if you come into sub, you have to know it cold. Um, and you have to knock it out of the park so that the conductor will actually ask you to come back uh, to get you on your way to being designated. I mentioned earlier that you can sub up to 50% of your shows per quarter. Uh, another option is that you can actually apply for leave. You can contact your MD, you can contact your in-house contractor, you know, have one of your designated subs essentially take over your chair and be in charge of it while you're gone. And then when you come back, it's still your chair. It's still your job, uh, which is amazing. It really, you know, sort of opens the door to a lot of flexibility. You can have a very wide, varied and productive career while playing on Broadway and still having some of that financial security. 
uh, and those those benefits, which is incredible. Hopefully by now you've got sort of a general idea of what it's like to be a musician on Broadway. I'm sure some of the musicians out there might be asking at this point, well, how do I get to Broadway? You know, how do I how do I get one of these gigs? The question might sound premature to some, I guess, you know, because of the pandemic. Um, but personally, I, I do believe that Broadway will be back. I, I think, if anything, it'll be back even stronger. I think there's going to be uh, kind of a surge in the arts and, and music industries as people start getting comfortable going back out again. And Broadway is such a cultural institution. I think, if anything, it's going to be at the center of that surge. Anyways, to my original point, um, you know, how do musicians get this gig when these gigs show up again? Uh, I mean, there, there are like tips and tricks out there. But honestly, the best advice I can give you is to be in New York City, uh, to be really good at what you do, uh, to play out a lot, to socialize um, when, when you're playing out, and to be a decent human. Um, that's honestly, networking is, is, is the way to go here. Cold calling music supervisors and people that have chairs generally doesn't work and if anything may actually work against you. Um, you know, I'd say if you put the time in to develop a reputation as a killer player, you know, someone who's easy to get along with, who can play in multiple styles and genres, you know, with a little luck over time, you're going to eventually run into somebody who has a chair that needs a sub or a music supervisor that, you know, is looking for a particular type of player or a composer who likes your style. I got my, my gig at the band's visit because the music supervisor for that show remembered me from a recording session six years ago. Um, you know, we, we chatted a little bit at the record release for that session. Um, and then I, you know, I didn't really hear anything from him until I got that email to audition for the band's visit. Somehow he remembered me. There, there weren't any tricks or anything, you know, it was a little bit of luck, but it was really the result of years of practice, playing out a lot and, you know, I assume being a decent human, uh, you know, and that's honestly, that, that's an important part of the equation. A lot of music supervisors very consciously try to bring good people and people that they think will get along into a pit. You know, it's it's a very small and closed space. There's no room for egos in there. Um, and it's very much in the show's interest for the band to have chemistry and to get along long term. You know, really, that's that's the best advice I can give you is, you know, be in New York, be good at what you do, and, you know, be a decent person. So I hope this video gave you sort of a little glimpse behind the curtain at what it's like to be a musician on Broadway. If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. You know, maybe I'll consider doing more Broadway related, you know, videos down the line. But either way, thank you for taking the time to, to watch this video. And I will see you next week for a looping video. Cheers.